I want to show you the simplest way to use the ChatGPT API with Python. In this example, we'll do three steps. Prepare the prompt, send it to ChatGPT, and then print the response. That's it. Let's get started. Before we can write our program, we have to make sure we've got the OpenAI Python module installed. In your terminal, which I've got open on the right-hand side of the screen, type in pip install OpenAI. I'm actually going to type pip3 because I have Python 2 and 3 installed. Install OpenAI. And I've already got it installed actually, but that should run through and install the OpenAI module ready to use. That's it. Installation complete. The next part is over in our program. We've just installed the OpenAI module, so let's use it in our program by importing it. So the top of the file, import OpenAI. Okay, super easy so far. The next thing we need is to tell the OpenAI module what our API key is. So when you signed up for OpenAI, uh, you were given API keys. If you're not sure where your API keys are or whether you have one, go to platform.openai.com and your personal menu at the top right. Click on View API Keys. And if you haven't got one already, click Create New Secret Key. You can give it a name if you want to. Create Secret Key and make a copy of it. This is only displayed one time. After you click Done, it's hidden from view. So make sure you make a copy. Done. And let's go back to our program. To tell the OpenAI module what our API key is, we type in the module name and then a dot to basically say inside that the API underscore key will be, use the equal sign, and here we type in the API key. So quotation marks and then paste whatever you copied earlier. Now this is actually not the best way to do this because your API key is visible to anybody that you share the code with. The best way to do this is to put the API key in what's called an environment variable. I've got a different video about how to do that and I strongly recommend doing that whenever you use an API key. But for now, I promised you the simplest way and so this is the simplest way. Next, we're gonna follow our three steps. So we want to create a prompt, send the prompt to ChatGPT and then print the response. Let's create a prompt and instead of writing it directly into the program, let's get the user to type in whatever prompt they want to. So we can simply do prompt equals and then the function input and then the parameter, the argument for input will be whatever we want printed on the screen, whatever question. So please enter a question or request and a space. Good. That's the prompt ready. Whatever the user types in will be the prompt. We now want to send it to ChatGPT and get back a response or a result. Let's store that in a variable called result. It can be whatever you want, of course. And the next part is sort of a fixed format. We use the OpenAI module. And then within that, we use an object called chat completion. You can also use image and other objects, but this time it's ChatGPT. So it's called chat completion. And then within that, we want to run a function called create because we're creating a request. Create with round brackets. Okay. To create the request, I'm going to press enter between these round brackets to format it nicely and make it easier to view. There are at least two parameters we need in the create function. And the first one is model, and the other one is messages. Model is the name of the model that we want ChatGPT to use. Now, currently, ChatGPT 4 and ChatGPT 3.5 are the most used ones. And so I'll use 3.5 because it's still very good and it's cheaper. So GPT 3.5 Turbo is the name. And that's it for model. Next is messages, and this will contain the prompt, but it's actually an array. And the reason it's an array is because you could include multiple messages, like a chat history, if you wanted to, to have some context. This time though, we'll just have one thing in the array, just one message. 
press enter again. Now within here, it's going to be an object again. So curly brackets. And this time we'll need two more things, a role and content. Role can be one of three things. It could be a system, it could be an assistant, and those two kind of give ChatGPT background information. Or it could be user, and that's the kind of the, the thing that we need to, to send the prompt. So role, role is going to be user. Next is content, and this will be the prompt itself. We have already got that prepared in a variable from earlier, and we called it prompt. So that's it. That is a request prepared, ready to go. And the third, third and final step is to print out the result. First of all, I'm going to do this the very easy way and just print result and we'll see what happens. I've already saved my file and so I'm going to run Python. I actually need Python 3, but you can probably get away with just Python. And then the name of the file. So it's run gpt.py. Press enter. OK, it's good so far. No errors. Please enter a question or request. Uh, what are some good names for a puppy? Wait a couple of seconds. And there we go. OK, we've got a whole load of stuff here that we probably don't need. But within there, we have got content there. And that looks like our answer from ChatGPT. Good. It works. That's the simplest way of using the ChatGPT API, but we can improve it slightly just to make this output a bit neater. The way we'll do that is instead of printing this whole result, we will print the choices array within inside the result. Within inside that, we'll print the message object, and within inside that, we'll print the content. So it's the choices array, then the message, then the content. Right, let's see if we can remember that. So it's result. And then the choices array, we want the one and only thing inside that array. So we use zero. Then it was message. And within message, it was content. OK, that should give us a much neater result. Let's try again. I'll clear this first and run again. What are some good names? Hey, there we go. It worked. You have your own version of ChatGPT running. And how easy was that? The program is super simple. It can't get any easier. And this should be, let's go back to the program here, a good foundation for you to add extra features or add complexity as you build up your knowledge. The first thing I would do, though, as I mentioned earlier, is change the way that you assign the API key so that you're not writing it directly into your program. So yeah, please check out the environment variable video if you're not sure how to do that. Another way to improve this is to add error handling. So you can add try and accept so that you get a nice human friendly error message if something goes wrong. Check out the OpenAI documentation for more details about how to use this and ideas for how to build on it. But for now, I hope this is a good starting point for you.